Uh, first of all, um, well, Tara doesn't introduce me. My name is Farhan Ujay. I belong to the Municipal Institute for People with Disabilities. That is uh, an organism that uh, is in the Barcelona City Council. And here today I'm going to present you something that we, in, in the team that we, we work on inclusion uh, in the museums, the Municipal uh, Institute for People with Disabilities. We have the, the aim of chasing the total inclusion of people with disabilities in the whole social areas uh, that uh, happens in Barcelona. And this team that uh, Yolanda is here and myself, we are on to um, inclusion in museums. And we wanted to present you today something uh, that is quite special because it's one of the most inclusive uh, museums that we have right now here uh, in the city. I'm here, uh, even though I don't work in the Royal Monastery of Pedralbes. I'm here then in behalf of some colleagues. I mentioned already Yolanda, but I will also mention um, Ana Castellanos and Gemma Bonet, who actually they do work in, in this uh, monastery. Uh, but well, uh, we accorded that I was the one who was going to explain it. So, um, and it's part of this uh, coordinated work that we would like to show, to share with you. <coughs> and. Just to say, I'm not going to present any research, uh, academic <laughs> research, or, nor on a, on a specific um, inclusion program. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, and, and that's why I think it's interesting to share it with you, what has been a change in the policy of the inclusion in a specific monastery, but it's, this is an example of what is happening, we think, in Barcelona for the last years. So, um, just Clara said already, um, just a brief story of, of this museum, in case you don't know. This is, uh, you can see the museum here, the monastery actually. Uh, this was founded in the 14th century and it was practically inhabited until our days, I think it, uh, to the end of the, um, the 20th century. And it was in the 1983 that it became a museum and so the nuns just don't live there anymore, even though they I think they live very, very close to the, the monastery. And as I said, it has lately became a uh, like a, a reference for the inclusion policies in museums. And I'll, and I'll try to explain you why. Of course, this museum has many goals. I won't go into this because I'm, just not, I'm not in charge of the museum. Um, but attending to this, this inclusion uh, thing we're talking on uh, this evening, um, one of the goals is obviously that the museum wants to become an open space to all audiences. And here, people with disabilities, this, that is the colleges that we work with, mainly, um, has a central role here. And so if we want to include people with disabilities, apart from other uh, colleges as well, and it, this is only possible if we adapt the space where uh, the museum is, uh, is located, as well as, and this is important again, the activities that are done and for the different special needs that, are, um, that the society shows to us. So um, this monastery had uh, obviously some special and quite difficult <laughs> challenges to overcome. First one is the one I was mentioned, uh, I, I mentioned already. This monastery is located in, up in the periphery of Barcelona. So this is a related to mobility. It's quite a, a, a handicap, I'd say, for some people to get there. And apart from that, obviously, it's a, a very interesting, a very precious uh, heritage building with a high number of physical barriers and that cannot simply be removed. Just more or less like uh, what we saw before in other, like in Monster San Cogal. So you cannot just take them away. Even though these difficulties were so prominent <coughs> and so, so clear, uh, we think that um, the museums could overcome these difficulties. And this is mainly <laughs> due to a change in its perspective. And this is, the main uh, thesis that I would like to show to you today and to, to share with you today. And they change it, and that's what we're seeing that is happening in all museums as well. They change uh, from a reactive world. So you, you change because some people is coming to you and they have special needs, and you adapt what you already have. And they change that for, uh, for what I would say like it's a proactive will. So um, we think and the whole uh, people from the very beginning. And I'll show you how this has changed even the shape of the, the same, uh, the, the, this monastery and this museum. Uh, sorry, in, in this 
I, I, I put this two pictures because to show you exactly this idea. You can see here this run, for example, it's a reactive uh, work just because they had some problems uh, with people to get inside and to enjoy the, the, the monastery, the museum, so they had to do something to just uh, go by. And here, there's an, another uh, solution that is integrated, and it's, uh, it suits, actually, with the, the, the overall museum. Um, I won't go, go very um, to, the, to the past, but just to, just to have a, a brief idea on how this inclusion on demand started to, to be an issue for this museum. Uh, in 2006 and in 2000, sorry, uh, 2019, or 2009, this is wrong, um, this, this, uh, there were two, um, two exhibitions that took place in the, in the museum that had um, the special effect on people that they, um, they came, so many people in, in, this, in this place that they were not supposed to be, uh, it wasn't allowed for them to say, okay? So what the museum had to do it was to change and try to uh, give an answer after the, uh, the exhibition was already done. After that, there was a turning point um, in Barcelona Municipal Museum. And this is, uh, it happened in between 2009 and 2012. And there was a diagnosis uh, carried on by IMPD, where I work, and also the ICUB, which is the Institute, uh, Municipal Institute for Culture. There was a, an accessibility diagnosis and from that moment, there was uh, the accessibility and the inclusion became a strategic issue for the whole museum in the city. This um, had a special effect, of course, uh, in all museums. But um, talking about the Monastery of Fadrales, um, they did their own job. They start doing their own accessibility study. And from that moment, they had uh, clear and specific guidelines on how to work uh, for the inclusion of people with disabilities. At the same time, and this is very interesting, you can see why, um, they started a network of collaboration with other actors, and what I call key actors. This is the IMPD. We work with people with, with disabilities, so we know how to deal with them, more or less. Uh, apart from that, they started uh, participating in uh, accessibility board uh, museums, um, where uh, there's, they're actually participating in, in two. This is. Uh, a board where um, they share the ideas and the projects with other museums of Barcelona and also from uh, of museums from outside Barcelona, close to Barcelona. And then the work they, they started to do with the NGOs. Okay, all this came into uh, a new methodology of work. So the main thing is that uh, the main issues on accessibility have to be taken into account, as I said, from the beginning and they have to be taken into account in all ordinary projects. It's not just that when someone comes and has a problem and getting into the into exhibition that you have to make a change. No, you have to think it, think about inclusion from the very beginning. And this also concerns the external workers, not only the people working in the, in the museum, but also when you uh, order an exhibition for, to someone from outside. Then they will start to work with uh, and have advices and trials with NGOs on specific matters. So, for example, you can see here in this picture, this is a, a tomb, this is a, a nice tomb, I'll, I will talk about this later. And this lady, she's blind, and she is trying this model that we ordered, and from her advices, uh, this model could be changed. Okay, so this is a kind of work that we're <laughs> trying to uh, implement in our daily work. Okay, and then, as I said, uh, they started to coordinate work with other actors that deal uh, oftenly um, with people with disabilities. And this gives some of the ideas that came in the previous part of the, of the session, that you need to be uh, in touch or talking with people that uh, work every day with people with disabilities. So you know, they know how to work with them and which are their needs and so on, okay? Okay, um, all this comes to this one is not new today. I'll go fast now. Um, <laughs> more fast than what I've done already. Um, as I said, all this changed the shape of the of the monastery. And the first thing is that um, 
we could say that physically and uh, the, the monastery has changed completely uh, through uh, the suppression of the physical barriers uh, on reversible or definitive solution. This I told you about this round before already. Uh, so these days the museum is mostly accessible for physical uh, impaired people. Uh, from this work as well, clear and specific criteria on accessibility concerning permanent and temporary exhibition in elements such as illumination, height, approach, etc. So every time there's a new exhibition, there's specific criteria that the exhibitors uh, have to follow. And then there's an overall policy on communication that takes into account the special needs on, on this issue. You can see here a model, for example, or a brochure. And all the communication problems and, and issues are taken into account from the very beginning as well. As I said, the main change that uh, you can see in this, in this museum is the fact that um, all these issues are incorporated from the very beginning of the project. So accessibility is, has to be taken into account at the same way uh, that is taken into account the communication uh, policies, for example, or pedagogic problems, etc. Okay, this is how this, um, mm, this museum has changed mainly. And this is their daily, uh, daily work, more or less, I'd say. And I would like to show you now, very briefly, four different examples that show us uh, a step beyond, I would say. Something that changes not only the usual things that we take into account for inclusion, but going a little bit further. I will talk to you about four different examples. First one is uh, um, the new elements that are being incorporated in the museum. Then all that has to do with accessibility on the contents, and there's a few projects here lately in there. And then the last one is about the medieval garden, which I love this project, and I would like to just briefly uh, explain you what it is about. See, um, this, I didn't say that this, um, this monastery was founded by Queen Lisenda. Yeah, that's uh, a long time ago. Uh, she is actually buried in, in the monastery, and there's a, this, her tomb is, is, uh, has a particularity that has two sides. Okay? You can see here one of the sides of the tomb. Well, and obviously people with blind and or visual impairments, they cannot approach uh, this place and they cannot touch it. So we thought on um, ordering a new model, and you can see it here, that has a particularity that, can, that, you, and that it has the both sides uh, in, uh, all together. So what we're planning to have, in, and this is uh, going to happen in autumn probably, is that um, this new model will be available for everyone, and this is a new perspective. And that's why I say this is thought from the accessibility perspective. Uh, it's a new perspective because thinking on people with disabilities, everyone will enjoy something that uh, will never enjoy, that is seeing both sides together. Apart from that, you can see here, this is where uh, is the base where the model is going, going to be. Um, we thought on everyone, and because this, this model is so high, um, someone would, would not, uh, people would not reach the top of it. So we we planned to have this articulated base that uh, lifts up and down and turns around, so uh, that children, but as well people with uh, using wheelchairs and, and so on, people with uh, low height, um, could reach all the parts of the of the different all the different parts of the model. Um, talking about the contents, just briefly, um, we the visits are adapted for people with intellectual uh, disabilities as well, as well as for blind people, deaf people, and so. So we are adapting the, the visits for for learning our communication difficulties. And here, and link it to the to um, Elena's presentation, um, we wanted to go a step beyond, and we knew about this project that Elena showed, uh, explained to you before. And it's not only uh, what we saw; it's not only who receives the visit, but who explains the visit. So <laughs> we are planning to have in next autumn uh, people that are the same, uh, like Elena told you before, people with Asperger syndrome that's gonna be doing the guide and, and explaining to the people and um, so having people with disabilities inside the museum. And this links me to the last project uh, this is a medieval garden, as you know, the monasteries used to have their own garden, and 
grow their own crops. Um, the direction of the, ministry, um, the, of the museum is planning to, to rebuild uh, the garden that uh, used to be in the museum, or in the monastery, sorry. And it's interesting because they're gonna use this, uh, they're gonna use the old crops that, uh, that well, uh, in the medieval ages, uh, the nuns used before. I won't go get into the ecological parts or, or historical parts of, of this project, which is very interesting. I'm interested in the social uh, dimension of this, this project. Well, um, for the ruling of this garden, uh, we are planning to have people with disabilities uh, inside the project. So people with disabilities from the surroundings will take part of this project and plant the crops uh, themselves as well. As someone said, and this is interesting, I think um, this project as well as the, the one before show us that we are not opening to the community. We have the community inside and this is uh, what probably will happen. And that's, that's the change of the shape that I was talking about. Um, the people with disabilities used to be an outsider, used to have an outside role, and instead of that, right now it's uh, being a central uh, role or in, in the ruling of 